Fighting their way through the goblin-infested valley of the pass, the survivors of the doomed East Haven expedition at last came upon the small hamlet of Kaldahar. Nestled within the roots of a massive oak tree, the tiny cottages were a welcome sight for the weary travelers. As the party approached the town, a warm breeze blew over them, chasing away the chill of the frozen pass and carrying with it the sweet scent of cooking fires. For now.
very well. Interesting. Indeed. Very well.
for now. Indeed. Expecting you for some time now. Yes, I am Arendelle, known to some as the Archdruid of Kaldahar. Though I invite you to dispense with the formalities and just call me Arendelle, plain and simple. Titles tend only to serve one's own vanity and aren't really of much use in this small mountain community. Yes, it was I who sent Alistair to East Haven for help. His death weighs heavily upon my conscience. For not only was he a student of mine, but he was also a friend and trusted companion. He will be missed, as will Rothgar and the other members of your expedition. Oh yes, I know. I also know that it was no accident. Someone or something did not want your party to reach Kaldahar alive. There are malevolent forces at work in these mountains. Forces that seek to undermine the delicate balance we druids have struggled to preserve for centuries. Oh, what did I could. The face of the evil remains hidden, but its presence is unmistakable. All about us, there are signs of its damaging influence on the balance. The unnatural weather, the recent rash of abductions, the numerous monster sightings in the pass. These all point towards something sinister. Even the animals sense something is amiss. The balance. It is what the druids of Kaldahar hold sacred and have worked to preserve for generations. It is all around us. It is us. Balance is the harmony that is achieved when man and nature learn to coexist, no longer contending with one another, but coming together as two parts of a whole. Balance is the belief that this town is built upon, the very reason for its existence. Druids of Sylvanus, the Oak Father, have tended this shrine since the beginning. For hundreds of years, we have striven to achieve the ideal balance between man and nature. When settlers finally came to this pass, it was the Archdruid Tolben, my predecessor, who laid the foundation for the relationship that led to the birth of this community. The Great Oak, the massive tree that stands above us, around us, it is a holy shrine to Sylvanus, for it was he who planted its seed when Ferun was first born. It is a testament to the raw power of nature. A monument to its ability to thrive in the face of adversity. Thanks to Tolben, the great oak we druids called the Kaldahar, and the town that has come to be known by the same name, have together become a monument of even greater significance. A monument to the balance. Tolben was the catalyst for the transformation of the shrine from a sacred grove to a thriving community in which man and nature exist as one. At first, settlers were kept away from the site. The druids of old saw outsiders as an affront to the sanctity of the tree and its sphere of benign influence. They erected thorny brambles to keep intruders out and used their powers to frighten away the men and women that came to build homes in a place they felt was obviously so close to the gods. It wasn't until the succession of Archdruid Tolben that things changed. Unlike his predecessors, he believed that the settlement of the valley was not only inevitable, but it was actually the will of Sylvanus. He also believed that we had been wrong in keeping the settlers away, and that the Oak Father had intended people to share in the miracle of the Great Oak from the beginning. 
When Tolvan finally became Archdruid, he formed a plan to fulfill the destiny of this sacred site by bringing about a union between the Great Oak Shrine and the settlers. It was this union that the Archdruid Tolbin believed would achieve the harmony that we had been striving for for generations. The harmony between man and nature. As it stands, Kaldahar is a monument to this vision. The tree and town exist in a natural symbiosis, where it is next to impossible to tell where one leaves off and the other begins. But now, the balance is threatened. I can only tell you of what little I know. Which disturbances would you have me speak of? As I'm sure you have noticed by now, there seems to be quite a few goblins about. It is not usual to see so many of their kind roaming the mountains so late in the year. It is almost as something has drawn them out of their holes, like carrion birds drawn to the scent of death. As if the goblins weren't enough, Several giants have been spotted moving through the pass in groups as large as ten. That many giants traveling together in such numbers indicates they are organized and are acting with a singular purpose. I have watched their activities closely. Their tracks trace a deliberate pattern through the mountains, almost as if they were on patrol. Another thing. While I was out scouting the giants, I discovered other sets of tracks, tracks I have never encountered before. What manner of beast made them? I could not say. I can only tell you of what little I know. Which disturbances would you have me speak of? Oh, yes. Terrible, terrible. At first, there were tales told by travelers of companions disappearing into the night, snatched up from their bedrolls as they camped along the narrow trail that winds through the pass. We did not think much of these tales, for such occurrences are not unheard of in these mountains. Then one night, Conlon's boy Shemish went missing. The next morning, the whole town searched for the boy, but turned up nothing. He was just gone, vanished without a trace. The boy was just the first. Several nights later, another disappeared, Megan Potts, the local midwife. Her husband, Khalil, was grief-stricken to the point of madness. With barely a word to anyone, he snatched up his sword and marched off into the darkness after his wife. No one has heard from him since. And now, the abductions are occurring more frequently. Aiden, the old innkeeper from the Evening Shade, was taken only three days ago. I can only tell you of what little I know. Which disturbances would you have me speak of? Oh, the weather in these mountains has always been harsh, but never like this. Fierce storms ravage the valley without warning, often lasting for several days at a time before vanishing as quickly as they come. It is barely midway into Leafall, and yet the pass to the south has been snowed in entirely. Weather such as this is most unnatural. Nature presents itself in cycles that are predictable by those who know what to look for. I fear that if we do not soon discover the source of these disturbances, then all that we have worked for will be destroyed. The evil that has come to these mountains infects this town like a disease. As its people suffer, so does the tree suffer from the sickness that attacks the balance corrupting it with its very presence. Already, the circle of warmth that radiates from the Great Oak has begun to recede. We were forced to abandon the outlying farmsteads as a result of the Shrine's fading power. If we do not take action soon, I am afraid that the life-giving warmth will cease altogether. Both the Great Oak and the town, nestled within its roots, will die. This must not happen. We need your help. I understand. But the circumstances leave you little choice but to get involved. I needn't remind you that the avalanche that wiped out your expedition, the one that you were fortunate to survive, has blocked the way back to the Ten Towns. As I mentioned before, the pass south has been entirely snowed in. There is no other way out of this valley. 
Your fate and the fate of Kaldahar are intertwined. You must discover the source of the disturbances and restore the balance, or we shall all perish together. I suggest you begin by investigating the Vale of Shadows. It is a place not far from here. Darkness has always clung to the floor of the small canyon, as if the light of the sun itself were wary of the place. There are a number of ancient crypts hidden within the shadows of the Vale's narrow cliff walls. There have been rumors of the dead awakening and emerging from their dusty tombs to walk once more amongst men. If these rumors are true, then I suspect that whatever is responsible for disturbing their slumber may be behind the other disturbances as well. Go to the Vale of Shadows, learn what you can about the happenings there, then return here and we shall discuss a course of action. Good luck and farewell. For now. Please, you must make haste. Time works against us. We must discover the source of this evil before the balance is altered irrevocably. Yes. You ready? Right on. Got it. All right. What can I help you with? Indeed.
do you seek guidance? Yes? Simple. Interesting. For now. Of course.
Yes. Interesting. For now. Yeah? I come to help. Of course. What? Right on. What can I help you with? Master? You ready? Do you seek guidance? Of course. Jack, right on. Yes, for now. Indeed. What? Got it. I come to help. Yes. 
Master? Got it. What can I help you with? Do you yes. Talk. Yes? Simple. You ready? For now. Indeed. Of course. By tempers, the vision speaks true. You are the heroes from my dreams. The vision is why I have come to this place. Tempas has guided me to you. This I cannot say. I know only that the storm of war darkens the skies of my homeland. My people are gathering in numbers greater than any have seen for generations. A king, both new and old, has risen to lead the tribes against the Ten Towns. Already the first snows of winter bear the dark stains of spilt blood. Wolfdane is his name. He was a great warrior from an elder tribe who was slain in battle on the eve of last season. Now his body has returned from death's halls to lead my people once more as king. Wolfdane's flesh is but a vessel, a borrowed tool. The spirit of the new king is much, much older than the form it now inhabits. It is said that the spirit of Jared governs his body. It is this claim that has fueled the fires of vengeance among my people. The same. You know our history well. Now, after centuries of imprisonment, Jared's spirit is free and rallies the tribes once more in a common cause. You must understand, I have read the signs. Tempas will not favor either side in the coming battles. Both my people and those of the towns shall be haunted by countless deaths without honor. I have cast my spirit into the nether realm in search of a way to prevent what must not be. My vision quest led me here to find you. You are the answer I seek. You must come to Hengoro, to the great mead hall where the tribes have gathered. You alone can forestall the war between our peoples. Indeed.
interesting. Very well. Come to help. Indeed. Yes. Yeah? Cool. What can I help you with? Yes. Of course. Indeed.
Yes. 